It's too much information sure. that people need. Okay. But people always try to weasel their way in. It's so funny, man. You know, I come from the east side of Detroit. I come from Warren. This, these are the places that I grew up at as a normal cat, as a normal person. So you got to understand how it is for me to reach this level of fame and this level of stardom and try to imagine what it could do to somebody's head when people that you think are your friends and swear to God when they're up in, their, up in your face telling you that they care about you and that they, they're your friends and they would never do anything to hurt you, and then they do, you got to understand, like, like, what it makes you go through mentally. On the phone with us right now is Eminem calling the Channel 955 Mojo in the Morning Show. The one part that made Jenny cry was when she said that... It's fake tears. Fake tears fake when she said tears. that her, her children missed your, your daughter so much? That her children miss my daughter so much? Mm -hmm. Her children can see my daughter. The but problem is her coming here oh. and her husband. That's the problem. I, told, I always told her, I will not, I'm not trying to mess up your marriage, but she let it mess up her marriage, and now I don't want drama from her husband. I don't want to have to... So you're not, you're not gonna, they have a bodyguard do. because they think that you're going to come after them. Do what? They have a bodyguard, they say, because they think you're going to come after them. They have a bodyguard. Yeah, they actually brought a bodyguard in here with us or with them this morning. Oh, come on, man. It's not even that deep. So, you, not so you're not, you're not going to hurt them. You don't care about that. No, no, no. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, ba I'm backing Kim up for, for what okay. she said. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to the radio, like, yeah, because I'm, you know, that's the first time that. Kim's ever really said anything in my defense or, or her defense. Will you back Kim up also? Uh, this girl was alleging that Kim was addicted to cocaine. Um, that I'm not going to speak on. Okay. That's cool. You know, cool. everybody, people have had their problems. Like, I've had my own little problems in the past, and I've, I've come out and addressed them in the public eye, you know. And I've, my, my road to success wasn't always perfect, and Kim's not perfect. But I'm going to tell you right now, that that girl who was sitting up there in your studio is the exact same thing that she says she's not, that she says that Kim okay. is. All right, let's do this then. We got Eminem on. Let's talk happy thoughts. You got the big movie coming out. Are you excited? Hold yeah. on one second. Okay. You get another call? No, no, no. Go okay. ahead. What <laughs> was the question? I, I, the big movie's coming out, 8 Mile. Are you, are you excited about this? I mean, I'm excited. I saw the previews. They look, it looks great. Yeah, this is... I, I actually am excited. It's... um. You know, I, I'd be the last one to, like, toot my own horn or anything. But, you know, the movie in the beginning stages, like, I was a little nervous. But, uh, you know, as we was doing the movie, I didn't look at none of the playbacks or anything, so I didn't know how it was going to come out. I just did the scenes and just did them and felt like if I felt real in the scenes that that um, it would work. Well, and they showed your movie at the Toronto Film Festival. Celebrities, everybody was standing up. You got a standing ovation at the end of that. And already, anybody who's ever seen it is talking Oscar. Is that freaking you out? That's a little weird. <laughs> because I, I just, I wanted to make a movie about kind of how I came up, not necessarily about my life, because I wanted to make a movie that, you know, the way that I came up is how, so many other there's so many other kids right now that are trying to come up the same way the right. battling you go down to the to the St. Andrews or whatever you go down to well what used to be the hip hop shop for us and and places like that and you see you still see cyphers going on and kids battling and and doing anything to make it making their demos and stuff anybody who is trying to make it in music I wanted them to be able to relate to this movie and I think that that's what it captures. You know and, what? We just had Kim on with us a second ago, and she didn't like the choice of Britney being uh, playing her. She, and, and, I, and I thought maybe she thought Britney was, you know, very, very beautiful. And then you heard what she said. Oh yeah. Do you, yeah Britney's a beautiful woman. I think she's obviously, cute. Kim doesn't think she's cute. Britney's Britney's cute. She's Britney's, hot. Um, but you know, I've got um, n not really good things or bad things to say about Britney. How, how did when you were picking somebody to play your mom? I mean, when I'm going to pick somebody to play my mom, I want somebody as hot as Kim Basinger playing my mom. You know? Yeah, that was a little weird. I, I I didn't pick her though. I didn't. It wasn't like she she, uh, you know, Curtis did most of the Curtis Hansen did most of the right. casting. So and, so when when he told you who was going to play your mom, what, what was your first reaction? Yeah. <laughs> Marshall, this morning we also had in Chloe, a little seven-year-old girl who's going to be playing your... Yo, she's the cutest girl in the world besides Haley. Yeah, and she plays your sister in the movie, and 
she told us about the time that you actually invited her to your house to play with your daughter, Haley, just so she can get to know you a little better. Yeah. It, it sounds like, you know, a lot of people can't separate, and we have the same problem with Bob with Kid Rock, that a lot of people can't separate you guys and, and your rapping role along with the personal side of you. How do you rate yourself as a father? How do I rate myself as a father? Yeah, because there's a lot of people out there that aren't fans of you uh, and your music, and they might look at you and... Betty screaming 10. 10. Um, <laughs> She's there. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I do the best I can. On a scale of 1 to 10, like a 20. <laughs> <laughs> Always humble. I tell you what, before we lose you here, I know you got to go. It's your birthday. Celebrating 30 years old today. Eminem, can you do an Eminem Mojo in the Morning liner for us? An Eminem Mojo in the Morning liner. Can you just say, because we know you're listening. So good at your freestyle. We, we, we know that you're listening. You can oh, do whatever on, you I'm just waking up. I got sleep in my eyes, man. I'm not good at that this, this early. You know, hey, this is, you know, Eminem, you're listening to Mojo in the Morning. I wake up with Mojo in the Morning or... Uh, Yo, what's up? This is Eminem. You're listening to Mojo in the Morning. I wake up every day to Mojo in the Morning, and I don't ever want to wake up like this again. <laughs> in the morning. Good answer. Is your Aunt Betty working on the cake for you right now? Uh, I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what she's got. I don't, we don't really have anything planned tonight, so, you know. Where's the birthday party? You don't have any, nothing, nothing yeah, in the zone? Yeah, there's, there's nothing that's uh, really planned. Surprise some people, okay? Surprise some people? Oh, I'm sure they might be surprising you. I mean, maybe I'll throw my own party. There you go, buddy. Good. I got a good gift for you. It's a book you can light your candles with. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Thank you. We'll, ta we'll talk to you soon, <laughs> man. To me. All right, thanks, man. Thanks for listening to Channel 955. No doubt. All right, okay. Eminem.